Hello my little butterflies, in this video is going to be my September wrap up. Hi guys, so it is October, I'm so excited, I'm like it's super excited, oh I gotta go get my stuff. Um, I want to do, for my videos, the next couple of videos, I want to show y'all a piece of my Halloween costume at the end and see if y'all can guess what my Halloween costume is going to be, I just thought it would be fun. But this is my September wrap up. I realized looking through my camera this morning that I haven't sat down and filmed in two months. The last video I uploaded was a month ago and that was my June and July wrap up that I did in August. So I, mean, I didn't do an August wrap up and I'm not about to do a whole video for August because that's something that I should have been done. And I'm tired of being late and doing two wrap ups together. But I am gonna run through and tell you guys what I read in August and just what I rated it. I'm not really gonna get into it because I don't want this to really be a long video. But in August I read eight books. Two of those books I reread and one of those books was a comic. But I read eight books in the month of August. The first book that I read was Paying Daddy's Debt by Alexa Riley and I gave that one three stars. It is like a short novella erotica novel. Um, my reviews on Goodreads, so I'm gonna link my Goodreads. My Goodreads always link down below. Y'all can go and y'all want to see the reviews for everything I'm about to mention. The second book that I read is also by Alexa Riley, it, and that was Untouched, and I gave that one two stars. Then I reread Thug Matrimony, which I love that book. It's an adult romance. It's by Wahida Clark, I think is how you pronounce her first name, but I give it five stars again. I love that book. That's the third book in the series. I need to finish it. I think there's two or three other books left, and I need to finish that. Then I read Fixed On You by Laura Lane Page and I gave that four stars. That's also an adult romance novel. And then I read Well Listen to the Audiobook for Starflight by Melissa Landers and I gave that five stars. I love this so much. It is a YA sci-fi. should have been read it a long time ago. I've heard about it a long time ago and I listened to it via Hoopla. So just in case you guys are wondering, this is not a paid promotion. I wish they would pay me to promote for them because I think I would be awesome because I use a service so well. It is a free app where you can listen to audiobooks, read ebooks, movies, um, you can listen to music, you can download whole albums. And I gave this four stars. It was a net gallery book that I had. It's uh, an adult mystery. And I really, it was a murder mystery. And I really enjoyed it. It was funny. Um, I have to do my review for it though. Because I haven't done my review. I'm kind of behind on some of my reviews. Not all of them though. Then I reread Crossed by Ali Condi. This was for a challenge. This was my, not by choice. I wanted to try to get as many points as I could before the last person standing challenge was over. And this is like the only book on my shelf that matched with whatever task it was. Um, and I gave that four stars because I gave it four stars before I didn't hate this one as much. It might have really been three and a half stars. I didn't hate it as much as I hated the last book. But y'all know in the Max Trilogy, I loved the first book. But after that, they weren't that great. And then the last book, which is also my comic that I read last month, is Bingo Love by T. Franklin. And I gave this five stars. Five stars. I love this one so I love this so much. It was really cutesy. I really liked it. I love the content. It was short. It was amazing. I also read that through Hoopla. And I think it is a newer comic too, if I'm not mistaken. It's something that came out recently. It's really amazing. I did see a couple people talk about it on Booktube. Not many. But I did see it go through Booktube. It's phenomenal. Y'all should check it out. And then in the month of September, I only read four books. Last one, I kind of really got lazy with my reading. I've been lazy a lot. That's probably why y'all haven't seen much from me. But I'm trying, I really am trying to get back on track. Which I know I still have a video on my camera that I never even edited. And it's my review of The Poet X by um, Elizabeth Acevedo. And I'm going to upload that first. But um, I'm trying to get back on track. I'm trying not to get lazy. I, I've been really lazy. I haven't been doing anything but laying on the sofa and watching Netflix. That's all I've been doing. I've been doing nothing constructive. I haven't been busy like that. I've had free time. I have had enough free time to film. I just haven't. Okay. But I'm trying to get out of this, this recording slump, I guess I want to call it. But last month, I only read four books. The first book that I read was The Bear by Claire Cameron. I gave this 
two and a half stars i hated it y'all like i had such high expectations for it so it's supposed to be about this family of four that goes camping a mom and dad and two kids a six-year-old and a four-year-old they go camping and it's based off a true story but the true story the kids weren't part of the story but the author added it in for the story um a bear kills the mom and the dad and the kids are left alone and i thought like you know i've never read a book from the perspective of a six-year-old at least not you know in my adult life i've never read a book from the perspective of a six-year-old before and that's what this is told in i listened to the audiobook i hated it it was very irritating the characters was very irritating it wasn't really much to go on after the bear attack after the bear attack it went downhill and i was just like she's for a six-year-old she's very irritating i feel like the personalities didn't match up with the characters the six-year-old i think her name was anna um she acted more like a four-year-old and the four-year-old brother he acted more like a two-year-old you know i like think stuff didn't match as a six-year-old how do you not know what bear is she kept calling the bear a dog it's like as a six-year-old how do you not know the difference between a bear and a dog as a six-year-old but she constantly brought up times where her and her parents have talked about bears and seen pictures of bears but in person you still don't know the difference between a bear and a dog i just felt it was stuff like that and she was very irritating as a six-year-old and it's just like she didn't act like a six-year-old she acted more as a younger child I don't know y'all i just thought that i was going to go on the emotional roller coaster i thought it was going to be more emotional and it really wasn't i was just i just wanted it to be over and it was already it, i think it was only four hours a four hour audiobook i just wanted it to be over it was i hated it <laughs> and then i reread milk and honey by ruby core i gave it four stars but i reread milk and honey by ruby core and i think i loved it more this time than i did the first time i read it like i loved it the first time i read it but i like loved loved it this time and i even went through and i marked more points that have become my favorites than what i did the last time i love this collection now don't get me wrong there are page fillers in here and y'all know how i feel about page fillers but majority of it is great okay and that's why i get five stars because what she said is amazing even her one-liners are deep like deep one line like one sentences like go a long way and i'm just like wow so i guess she did her page fillers really well so um i'm not gonna lie to you say that they don't have it in there that doesn't bother me anymore because it does even though there's in a lot of poetry but her one liners were uh, amazing i love it i loved it and a lot of people do and this is why they everything she says has like a really deep meaning like you feel it but i'm not gonna get in on it but it was great i loved it then I read Inker by Aladia, I think is how your name is pronounced. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but that is a collection of poetry as well. She collect, uh, she contacted me through Instagram, so I'm getting tongue tied. She contacted me through Instagram because she seen that I posted a, I did a post about milk and honey, and that you know I love poetry, and she wanted to know if I would review her collection of poetry that she had recently published and review it. And I was like, yeah, of course. And I paid for it out of my own money. You know, she didn't pay for it. Uh, you know, she, it wasn't a free, you know, give out. I paid for it with my own money. I bought the Kindle version. And I absolutely loved it. I gave it four stars. Then, honey, it lacked nothing. No depth. It didn't lack depth. It didn't lack understanding. It didn't lack emotion. It was really great. It was a great runner up to Milk and Honey because I read it right after I read Milk and Honey. I really enjoyed it. it I'm so happy that she contacted me because I probably never found it and y'all know I love poetry and her poetry I really loved it it was really deep I think I but I love the most about her collection is that it wasn't directed to one situation like even her intro was fucking awesome like she's telling you isn't it this isn't about one situation you can apply it to however you see fit in your life if this point speaks to you apply it to your situation it wasn't just about it's not like she wrote a collection of poems and it's based off of and you know like she had to direct it at hurt off of a relationship or you know something happened to her it wasn't directed at one single thing it was some it's one of, it's one of those collections of poetry where you could take whatever she wrote and put it into any situation in your life it's like if she wrote about heartbreak of a boyfriend it can apply to having heartbreak of a family member or heartbreak of a best friend it doesn't have to just apply to that situation i love that her poems were universal like that that was like the one thing i think that stood out to me 
um, regarding between hers and other people's collections of Bori. The only thing, the only thing that I did not like about her collection was sometimes you couldn't tell what one point ended and another one started. That was like the only thing. Sometimes, like because she didn't have like you know titles, which is perfectly fine. You don't need titles in poetry, but sometimes you couldn't tell where this one ended and the next one picked off. And that was the only problem that I had with it. And sometimes she had some page fillers, but they weren't like one-liners. They were, you know, they were a little bit longer, but weren't a whole poem. And sometimes those you couldn't tell if it was part of the previous poem or if it's setting up for the next poem. That's the only thing. Sometimes they kind of ran into each other. Then the last book that I read this month was Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear, and I fucking loved it. It's a amazing freaking time traveling novel like I have always heard about Ruby Red since before I started booktube I've heard about it but I never read it and I, I didn't know that it was time travel I don't know what I thought it was but I did not know it was time travel so I got the audiobook from Hoopla all right and it was amazing I loved listening to this I already um I downloaded I already borrowed Sapphire Blue but I haven't started reading it and it's about to go back on the tent so I need to start listening to it I could just read get it whenever but I love this so fucking much like y'all know I was having a bad time with time and traveling and I was at one point and I kind of just stopped looking for them okay because I was just having bad luck they weren't what I needed them to be they were missing something and Ruby Ray had everything like it was oh it blows your fucking mind it was great oh and boom goes the dynamite I just I love so much about this novel and it just makes you think like oh that would be great to time travel and then you realize for people like me um the past wasn't so friendly to you know us chocolate skin people and then it's like yeah no I don't really want time travel and it sucks because it's like the in the past was so beautiful like 20s and stuff I, I would love I think the 20s was a beautiful era like I don't know why but I just think the flapper girls and everything they just think like it and you know all the, the American gangsters you know I just think that was such a beautiful time era but I know the 20s were not kind to people like me so there's no way that I would want to go back in time and travel that way because it wouldn't they wouldn't be very nice to me and it sucks but it's life you know but it was great to live it through this book though you know like it, oh it was fucking amazing like i loved the transitioning through the chapters a lot of times that's the problem and the time traveling novels that i'm reading that weren't it was either no transition so you didn't know when you was traveling to the past or the transition was terrible so the transitioning in this was amazing like you can actually the description of how things were changing around her as she was going in the past i loved it and it was constant it wasn't something different all the time so you knew when she started to feel dizzy and things started to shift around her you knew she's going into the past it wasn't like oh this time is one thing and next time is the next thing you know just as well as she does what's happening and it was just like i loved it it was it was done so well i love the family dynamic not saying that um i love you know that how they treated who they thought was the time had the time traveling gene versus, versus what they treated Gwen. I love the fact that they seem like a relatable, like normal family. Like you know, every family fusses and has their ups and downs. They they weren't presented as being perfect, and that's what I liked about it because everybody family has their issues and their arguments, and I think that's what I liked most about it. Another thing was I really loved Gwen and Leslie's friendship. Like they was friendship goals. I love that they was close and Leslie stayed in the picture and Leslie wasn't faded other than like a faded out character and she was like a great friend through it all. She was like very supportive. She didn't stop hanging out with her or just disappear throughout the story. So I love their friendship. I hope it carries on throughout the trilogy. I haven't heard anything but I hope it does. I did not like our budding romance between Gwen and Gideon. I didn't like it. Hated it. Sorry. I just don't want it to happen. I don't trust Gideon at all. How's you know, I just don't trust him. I don't like how he how he acts. Like one minute he was all over her cousin, he was all over Charlotte when they thought she was the Ruby. And then when they found out she wasn't, all of a sudden, oh what well, it's not that he's always all over Gwen, but sometimes he's like that 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 little brother, that annoying brother that picks at you and pokes and picks stuff out about you that that you already know about yourself that you don't like and he picks it out and then other moments oh he wants to smile at you and think you're cute and it's, I don't like it I don't want them together I hope they don't get together I don't like it I don't want it I don't trust him I don't trust him at all not one bit I just 
I don't have a good feeling about him, and I don't know. I don't want it. I don't want them to be in a relationship. I don't like him for her. There's somebody else out there that would be perfect for her, and I don't like it. But the ending was amazing. Of book one, the ending of Ruby Ray was amazing. I was the epilogue. I was just like, what the hell did I just listen to? Like, what just happened? I was like, I know this is not going on, but. Anyway, Ruby Ray was really great. I want to do a review, but I want to do a review after I do the whole series. Like, I think I want to start doing that when I read series, like trilogies that's done. I want to, you know, talk about the first book a little bit, but I want to do, like, full reviews with the collection as a whole and then go from one book to the next to the next. I don't know. It's, it's the idea. But that is all for my wrap-up for September and for all this, I guess. And yeah, thank you guys for coming. Hopefully I get better with my uploading and I'm back to being normal, but I'm not sure. Also, I realized while I was taking this hiatus of not filming anything that I missed my third booktube anniversary. Um, it was in August, I think August 12th or something around that nature was my third. So I've been on booktube for three years now. Not sure how I feel about it. Like I was really excited last year, but this, I don't know. I'm gonna talk about it though, but I don't know. It just... I don't know, but yeah, thank you guys for watching my video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. So y'all, almost forgot two things, actually. I forgot that I said at the end of my videos this this week or so, the next, next couple of videos until I'm done showing y'all stuff, I'm going to show y'all one item in my Halloween costume to see if y'all can guess what I'm going to be for Halloween, and then I forgot to do my thumbnail, so it's a good thing I came back. Okay, so the first item I'm going to show you is my wig that I'm going to be wearing. And we can see what y'all can get. I don't think you may be able to guess it from the wig. Just, it could be anything. So this is the wig that I'm wearing. It's orange. It's, it's a little orange ombre wig. Not exactly the hairstyle of my color of my character that I'm gonna be, but it is the color of my character's hair that I'm gonna be for Halloween. So it has some little waves. It's, it's just orange, orange hair. Think of anything with orange hair that I could be for Halloween. I'm not going to tell you if I'm scary or not. You know, just think of anything that I can be. Alright. And that is my one item. I would love to hear y'all guesses if y'all have any down below. And we will see how interesting this would be. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have fun doing this. I don't know if anybody's going to answer because lately people haven't been commenting on my videos. But it'll be fun. So... Don't be a killjoy. Don't be a square. All right. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Again, thank y'all for watching my video. Bye.